What say we get started? That sounds good to me. I'm going to come down here. I'm on a Mac and I'm going to go into Adobe Premiere Elements. Now, I'll make an assumption here, but I think it's a pretty safe one. You've got the program loaded. You may have even opened it. You might even use it. The cool thing about programs today that really wasn't true years ago is they're very easy to load. I mean, it's all an automated process. Okay, I've got the program open. It doesn't matter what you see here. You might be on expert mode. You might be on quick mode. It might look slightly different. Preferences, and that's what we're going to talk about, have nothing to do with what we're doing right now. So it doesn't matter. Don't worry about what's on the screen. If you're using a Macintosh, go up to the word Adobe Premiere Elements 11 and go down to Preferences. If you're using Windows, same preferences, but we get to go someplace else to get them. Go up to the word Edit on the pull-down menu and go down to Preferences. Now I'm on a Mac. I'm going to go here. Once you get to them, they're the same. No big deal. We're going to start with General. Now we're not going to go through all of them. We will talk about more of them in other chapters when it makes, I guess, better sense. But there are some things in Preferences that I think you need to set up right up front based on nothing else than getting more efficient with what you want to do. In general, you've got things like a pre and post roll. Now that's how much roll on the tape you get before and after capture. Let's worry about that when we get into capturing. This one is a transition. Now we're talking about taking a clip and then fading it out and then say fading in another. You've got a ton of transition effects. The default is 30 frames per second. Now what does that translate into? The default project runs 2997. For the sake of what we're doing here and talking about counting frames, let's not split hairs on this. Let's just say 30 frames a second. That means one second. If you're always doing transitions, I don't know, a little bit more, why not change it here? That way, every time you do one, it'll be, say, 60 frames or two seconds. Same thing with audio transition, except that does work in seconds. Incidentally, we're assuming when you say 30 that you're using the default frame rate. You can change the frame rate. If you change the frame rate to, say, 15 frames a second, then 30 would be two seconds. Now, here's another one, still images. When you drag a photo onto the timeline, its default is 150 frames. So that'd be five seconds if you're running 30 frames a second. Some of this other stuff is not going to make too much sense until we get into the program and begin working. So let's skip that for now. But I do want to show you this one, timeline render. Draft or high quality? Now I would strongly recommend that you leave that at draft so you can work and you're not always waiting for rendering to happen. This has absolutely nothing to do with the final product. It has to do with the working product. And to me, I'm willing to give up a little bit of quality to get the job done. That's general preferences. Let's look at a couple more. Audio over here. This is the only one I want to mention right now. Play audio while scrubbing. Now that can be a really important thing because as you grab your playhead right down here, as you grab that playhead and begin moving it, if you've got that on, you can hear the audio as you're scrubbing. If you're going really fast, it's going to sound like a bunch of chipmunks. But sometimes you're looking for a spot, maybe where there's a gap, whatever, so it's not bad to have on. Sometimes to me it gets annoying, I turn it off. Audio hardware is basically what are you outputting to. Now I've got a lot of devices I can output to, but this only impacts, obviously, Adobe Premiere Elements 11. If I'm using iTunes and I've got it hooked up to a really nice set of speakers, this only changes what I hear when I'm working inside of Premiere Elements. Let's go ahead and skip mapping and go right to this one right here. I love autosave. Years ago, there was nothing more frustrating than working on a project and having your system crash and not being able to recover. You have by default, although you can change it, every 20 minutes it does a save, and it saves up to five versions back for you. So in a crash, you can recover from that last save. I do like that. You can change those numbers if you want to. Let's go to Media. In Media, I want to mention this right here. This is the Media Cache database and where it is. Now, you can put it anywhere you want. That's just the default location by clicking Browse. But there's a Clean button down here. What's that for? Well, it erases the cache. The cache holds temporary stuff, renders and files and information that are required to make your project run efficiently, and it has to build them as you're working. It's possible. It's not really that rare. It can happen where there's a corruption in one of those files. 
Now, instead of everything just working perfectly, you begin to experience problems. If you clean the cache, if you click that button, it will erase the cache for everything. Now, what that means is when you reopen projects, it's going to have to rebuild the cache for the project. That might be a minute, it might be a few minutes, depending on the project, but sometimes it's worth it to get the system kind of like flushed out and clean and ready to go again. Here's another one that's important, scratch disks. Now you can see all of mine except media cache, which is that customized space, custom. Say same as project. So when you save a project on a hard drive, all the stuff goes in that hard drive. Now that can cause a traffic jam. Now I've traveled around the United States, actually around the world, but one of the places in the United States that has some of the worst traffic is the Beltway in Washington, D.C. I think that's the worst in the country. Well, it's the capital of the country. They got a lot going on. The traffic jams slow you down. If you put everything on the same hard drive, it's like a beltway jam if you divide things up. Ever get on your GPS and say, I want an alternate route? And even though the route might be a little bit longer, you get there faster because you don't have to slow down? If you have more than one hard drive, you can click the browse button on these and assign it to those different hard drives. Divide the load, if you will. It can make Adobe Premiere Elements run a whole lot faster for you. So if you've got extra hard drives, make sure they're fast. No old slow things. Ultra USBs, things like that. Use them, save you a lot of time. Tell you what, that's about it for preferences. We have others. We'll talk about some of them as we work through these lessons. But these are ones that I think that are kind of important to get down now when you begin a project. And let me say one more thing. We get into programs like Photoshop and change the preferences, and a lot of times I talk about set it and forget it. In Adobe Premiere Elements, being a video editing program, I think some of the settings that you put up here, like this stuff here, might actually be very dependent on the project that you're working on, and you might come here more often than you usually do. But preferences are very important. They make the program work the way you want it to, and they can make it more efficient.